This is Just a Thought, a podcast for parents ready to change their mind and change their lives. This podcast is packed full of the one thing that will change your life, your parenting, and your relationships. Don't believe me? It's just a thought. I'm your host, Christina Stead, and this is episode five, How to Be a Good Mom. These days, many parents are drowning in conflicting messages and advice about how to parent the right way. I used to obsess over what the right way meant. I used to Google, what does a good mom do? And how to be a good mom. I would do it when my baby was crying and I didn't know how to make her stop. I Googled it when I was so tired and angry and I felt out of control. I really hoped and felt that somewhere I would find the secret to being a good mom so I could finally be the mom I wanted to be. Then my kids wouldn't cry all the time. They wouldn't make me feel crazy. They would listen and obey me. They wouldn't backtalk or get into trouble. They wouldn't have dirty shirts or runny noses or diaper blowouts, and I would be perfect. I would always be patient and kind and happy. I would never worry and never feel angry. I would never yell or hurt them in anger. They would be perfect children sitting around in pretty clothes, always smiling at me, with me smiling at them. When I would get to that point, I would realize that I was probably off in my thinking, but I didn't know where I was taking it too far. Either way, something in me truly wanted to feel more in control, more composed, more like I knew what I was doing, more like a good mom. Back then I worried a lot. I worried that my girls were going to die in their sleep. I worried they'd be kidnapped. I worried that I might lose my temper. I worried that I wasn't good enough to be a mom. I felt guilty and worried that I wasn't enjoying being a mother like I should be. I felt like I was missing out on something. Years later, I realized that the kind of parent I am can be defined, but it wasn't in the way I originally thought. What I was looking for was a sense of validation and some guidelines that I could measure myself with. The pain I was experiencing back then in my parenting and that I see others around me experiencing was a problem in my thinking. So this leads me to ask, how do you know if someone is a good parent? Are they a good parent if their kids seem happy? Is it if their kids are obedient and do what their parents expect? Is it based on how their kids turn out when they grow up? If someone is a good parent, will their kids approve of the way they were raised? Or does something else define whether or not they did it right? What does a successful parent really look like and do? Many times when we talk about parenting, Many want to see the results of the parenting reflected in the children, but it's not a direct correlation. I would bet that most of us have heard stories about children who have had tragic and horrible childhoods, and yet somehow they overcame these challenges and became influential and successful adults. There are also stories of children who led carefree, happy lives with a lot of support and love, and yet they never amounted to much. This is because although we are all affected by each other's decisions and we have the power to make a difference in each other's lives, we're not responsible for each other's choices or reactions to life experiences. And we cannot guarantee that what we do will determine others' results. That can be good or bad, of course. So please keep that in mind as you parent. Do work to be the parent you want to be, but don't determine your results by how your children behave determine your results by how you behave. Generally, the behavior of your kids will follow. And if nothing else changes, you will be blown away by how your life will improve when you start being responsible for you. I like how Paul Johnson and Laura Davis from My Recovery put it. I am responsible for my health, physical, mental, and then I add spiritual and emotional health. Continuing on with them, quoting, I am responsible for my food, my sleep, my exercise. I am responsible for my appearance, my belongings. I am responsible for my accommodation, my safety. I am responsible for my finances. I am responsible for my work. Interestingly, I am only responsible for my responsibilities at work. My colleagues are responsible for their responsibilities, for their communications. Not all things are in my control. I am responsible for my family. Again, I am responsible for the way I communicate and behave, but my family 
is responsible for their actions. For my children who are under 18, I am responsible for their safety, care, and well-being. I am responsible for my friendships. Again, I am responsible for the way I communicate and behave, and my friends are responsible for the way they communicate and behave. So finishing the quote, I want to add to the list that I am also responsible for my thoughts and feelings. The next point I want to be very clear about, because I think this is where most people's thinking start to get skewed when it comes to responsibility. Many of us consciously or not believe that we are responsible for others' emotions. We think things like, I just want them to be happy. They shouldn't feel sad. I just don't want them to be angry. We are totally allowed to think these things. But just know that someone else's feelings and thoughts are none of your business. We sometimes think it is good or loving to think, I want my kids to be happy. But what if... Happy isn't what they actually want to or need to feel at this time. Our thoughts and feelings make us human and provide us with a real human experience. My new goal as a parent and a person is not to cut all emotions that are traditionally considered negative out. My goal is to learn and teach how to be intentional in what I choose to think and feel and help others find the knowledge and opportunity to do the same. Just like there is a need for bitter and sour ingredients like limes, lemons, baking soda, baking powder, and cocoa powder, there is certainly room and need for emotions like anger, fear, resentment, and worry in our experiences. Just as much as there is room for patience, happiness, peace, and gratitude. I want to feel angry when I need to be bold about things happening that I don't agree with. Anger is a feeling that motivates action. Christ was angry when he cleansed the temple. Sometimes I want to be sad. I want to be sad when people I love die. I can feel peaceful and hopeful and sad. And I want to keep that sad part. Sometimes I want to feel resentful. Sometimes I don't feel ready to work through my thoughts and feel differently. I haven't found a situation yet where resentment has been helpful to me. But I do know sometimes I want to feel it. And I do. And then I harvest the results of resentment, feeling terrible, slouching, glaring, ignoring, judging. But these emotions and feelings are mine to choose, and I'm so glad of that. All parents are human. We are alive. We feel. We feel happy, sad, angry, joyful, afraid, and grateful. We can feel many of these emotions at once, and our kids can too. In Isaiah 55, 8 in the Bible, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. God thinks different things than us and allows us to think our own thoughts and learn and grow. I love that. If someone says they are feeling differently than you want them to feel, give yourself permission to think and feel the way you wish they would think and feel. And then realize it's okay that they think and feel differently. If you are in a role of responsibility, by all means, lay out rules, boundaries, and consequences, and then hold others accountable. When it comes to feelings, I recommend you meet people with curiosity and empathy instead of a desire to change their feelings and make them happy or make them feel anything else. Believing we are responsible for others' emotions or choices dangerously conflicts with the belief that we all have been given agency from God. The choices we make all have consequences attached. It's like Stephen Covey said, if you pick up one end of the stick, you also pick up the other. The only thing that any of us can do is strive to be the best version of us. Obviously, we do have responsibility to protect our children, and we enforce rules to do that. And I might do things that I hope make them happy. I can affect their happiness, but I can't control it. I could spend lots of money on them, spend the day with them, and do a ton of fun things, and come home at the end of the day and they might cry and be unhappy anyway. If I was doing what I did to make them feel happy, I would be sorely disappointed and perhaps even resentful versus feeling satisfied despite their sorrow that I did what I did because I hoped it would make them happy, but either way, I believe it will be a good thing for them, whether they feel happy about it or not. 
I may choose to do something because I feel it might make someone else happy, but I need to take responsibility that I am choosing to do whatever I decide to do or not to do. I get to choose. In all of this, I want to be clear that I know as parents, we are all just humans. We are all learning and growing and observing. We will all mess up. We will all be the kind of people we don't want to be sometimes. We will all feel we failed. And the two thoughts that bring me comfort in that are, nothing has gone wrong here. And God makes bad things good. Like in the Bible, when Joseph's brother sold him into slavery. And in Genesis 50, 20, it says, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Because of Jesus Christ, we all have hope. I've also heard the thought that perhaps our children need us to mess up a little. God's work and glory is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man, so he gives each one of us the experiences we need to bring us to him, with plenty of room for us to choose him. He gave us, each of us, the parents and children that we have, for a reason. So, with all that said, here is my checklist to be a good mom. Good mom checklist, which can also be applied to dads or any other human for that matter. Here it goes. Am I taking care of my personal self-care needs? Drinking water, going to the bathroom, eating nourishing food, practicing loving movement, thinking loving thoughts about myself, getting enough sleep, fill in expressing gratitude, spending time in prayer and meditation, keeping my promises to myself and taking care of my hygienic needs? Am I helping my children do the same to meet their own needs and practice accountability in developmentally appropriate ways? Am I setting clear expectations and boundaries for my children? Am I allowing myself to feel what I am feeling? Am I taking responsibility for my feelings and actions? Am I allowing my children to feel and be responsible for their feelings and actions? Am I trusting myself and my feelings? Do I realize I make mistakes and that I am learning and observing and looking for the most effective solutions? Do I remember that when I don't achieve the results I want, I can try again with new information and thoughts? Am I acknowledging that I am responsible for what I allow my children to do and not to do while they are minors in my home and what I feel is right for our home is appropriate to enforce? Am I focusing on being the parent I want to be, especially when my kids are not acting the way I'd like them to? Am I modeling the person I want them to become? If my answer is yes to these questions, I check the box. If it's no, I have a new goal to work towards being the person and the parent I want to be. So, in a nutshell, we can be good parents. And we can be good parents today when we start to focus on what we are responsible for and let our children do the same. I wish you lots of motivating thoughts. This is your host, Christina Stead, and this is just a thought.